Hello, welcome to this short session we're gonna do today. In the civil code, we're gonna talk about uh, in the part or the chapter out of transferring property without the aid of a broker. I think that's chapter four. We're gonna talk about donation mortis causa. Now I did an episode on uh, the first part of donations, which we talked about inter vivos or donating while someone is alive, okay? Now, donation mortis causa is the second part of the donation uh, section that talks about donating when someone dies. Although a will's made out or can be made out, we're gonna look at the uh, civil code law that deals with children and how the estate is distributed, or someone could die uh, intestate without a will. But we're talking about donation mortis causa or a donation that's made by someone who has died or deceased. And so this is what we're gonna talk about this morning in this session. My name is John Enzing. I'm a certified real estate instructor, both in Louisiana and Florida. Listen, my specialty is to teach you or to private tutor you, the student, and prep you for the exam so you pass it the first time. Non-credited hours, common law, from finance to contracts to math, civil code, state portion. All you have to do is go to privatetutoringsession.com, privatetutoringsession.com, book an appointment. Or just email me, john.enzing at gmail.com. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this. We're talking about donation mortis causa. Now, let's look at some terminologies and what what, what is it about donation mortis causa that you have to know for the state exam? So mortis causa is a donation due to someone died. Remember, in the other uh, session I did on donations, the first part, if you want to call it part one, is donation inter vivos. That's somebody's alive. So they donate property while they're alive. Donation mortis causa is a donation to someone due to a death, okay? And so what happens is the term we're looking at is testate. When someone dies testate, that means they have previously made a will out when they were alive. So that is a voluntary transfer and a decision that the homeowner or property owner made while they were alive, they made out a will to someone in succession to them. So when they do die, the property is transferred into the successor's name. So we want to know that mortis causa, donation mortis causa, is due to death, and it's 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 uh, it's uh, termed under the term testate, which means to die with a will. Remember, intestate means without a will, and the state's going to decide who gets the property. So that's not part of a mortis causa donation. Remember, someone's donating the property, but it's done through the will. They made the decision while they were alive, but when they die, because they died testate with a will that is going to determine who gets the property. So that's the donation due to death or mortis causa is what it's called. So let's look at some terminologies when it comes to donation mortis causa. You got to know a testator is the male who makes out a will. A testatrix is the female or the donor that dies with a will. Okay, so when you're dealing with donations, you're talking about donor, donee. Even with inter vivos, as we discussed, you have a donor or donee. Same thing with donation mortis causa. The testator is the male who wrote out the will, okay? That's testate. And then the testatrix is the female who wrote out the will or called the donor who wrote out the will for the property. Now, what are some types of wills? Uh, just for the state exam, these three are the more popular ones. Olographic, that's handwritten. Non-cupative or mystic will that's sealed with witnesses that's no longer used. And a notarial will is one that has to meet statutory requirements. What does that mean, statutory requirements? Well, the Louisiana revised statutes uh, in real estate or in, in, in actual the legal sense of uh, law in Louisiana, the civil code has certain criteria that a notarial will must meet for it to be uh, pro probated in court and be approved, okay? So there's gotta be a certain language in that will. That's what statutory requirement. It's gotta meet Louisiana state law when it comes to how the will is written up. Certain verbiage needs to be in it for it to be approved. So oligraphic, handwritten, non cupative or mystic, a sealed witness is no longer used, and then a notarial will is gotta meet Louisiana statutory requirements. That's why it's important to go to an attorney 
when you're drawing up a will. You want to make sure if you do a notarial will, you got the required uh, statutes that meet uh, the requirements. So when it does get probated in court and get approved, the person in succession will get the property. If it's something that's downloaded, say off of Google, some type of will, and you fill it out and you file it away and then the time comes to get probated in court or approved, may not have the right language. So it's not no longer a will or testate or a mortis cause of donation. It becomes intestate now because the will is no good. So the state's going to decide who gets the property. So make sure in notarial will, you get it approved or at least looked at by an attorney that's practicing in Louisiana. So oligraphic, non-cubative or mystic and notarial will are the wills that you, um, you want to be familiar with. Now, we have a term called succession. Succession is the event. That is the event that recognizes what's called successors or those who are in line, okay, who are in line to receive possession of an estate. It could be property along with other types of uh, assets. And we're going to look at that uh, a little bit more in detail. So succession is the civil code law that recognizes successors, the ones that are going to receive and place them in possession of, could be a property. It's called the estate, but it could be property and other assets as well. Investment accounts, CDs, IRAs, all that stuff. Now, you want to know this term season. Season is a term that's used when it's the acquisition of property at the moment of death, okay? Remember, when succession is taking place after someone dies, it may take up to five or six months to complete the succession, the attorneys doing the succession. Well, at the moment of death in time is when the property is automatically transferred. Ownership is going into that successor's name, okay? The acquisition of the property is at the moment of death. It just, the protocol of going through succession, the attorneys making sure everything's right, has to be done. But for the test, you want to know the word season, the acquisition of property or the acquiring of property happens at the moment of death. Who are the successors? That's the one who inherits the properties. Now, in Louisiana, you want to be familiar with the two types of successors. One's called legatees. That's someone who dies testate with a will. They're called legatees who receive that. They're named in the will and what they get. They're called legatees. If someone dies intestate or without a will, they're called heirs. Remember, the state of Louisiana is going to dissent and distribute according to the law to the heirs. Again, intestate without a will, they're called heirs. Those are the ones receiving the inheritance and then the successors in a will that states, here's who gets the uh, property and assets, they're called legatees. So legatees is with a will, testate, heirs is without a will, intestate. You wanna know those. Now, the estate of descendant includes, what this means is when they, when they define the word estate of descendant, of the descendant, this is the estate that includes both asset columns, yes, 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 and the liability column, okay? So someone dies and leaves a will, or even if they die without a will, intestate. So the entire estate, which is the asset column, obviously goes to the successor, whether they are legatees with a will or they are heirs without a will, but they also get the liabilities with it if there's any debt, okay? So that's called the state of the descendants, includes both the assets and liabilities. Now, continuing on, just kind of review, testate succession, as we said, someone dies with a will. Always remember, this is made out, this will is written out when the person's alive, but only when it's, when they decease or they die is when that property is transferred or the estate is transferred. So. Testate succession, again, with a will. Now, you want to know this term collation, okay? Collation is a term in civil code that means someone has collected or received in advance while the individual's alive 
say they died with a will or say they wrote out a will and they leave out of two sons, they leave one son, um, you know, $100,000 and the other son's going to get $100,000. Well, let's say the one, one of the sons, while everybody's living, collects 50000 in advance to maybe start a business or get an education. And so the time comes when the individual, the property owner uh, dies and has a will again to the son, 100,000 each, but one son collected in advance. So that's gonna be returned, not physically returned to the um, uh, will as far as, but they're gonna receive 50,000 less because they collected in advance. That's what collation means. Because it was received in advance, they won't get that portion in the will as it's written. Okay. Remember, both sons receive a hundred thousand in a will, but later on, one of the sons collects fifty thousand. Then you know the property owner dies. One son's going to get a full hundred thousand, but the other son's only going to get fifty thousand because they collected in advance fifty thousand. All right, a device. This is what's gifted. This is real property. What is called is a device. Okay, so that's real property that's in a will. They call it a device. Who's a divisor? That's the person leaving real property in a will. And the device C is the real is the person receiving real property. So we're talking about remember under the definition of real property can't be moved and immovable could be a house, uh, investment property, something that's immovable can't be moved. So a divisor is the one that's leaving it in a will. The device C is the one that's receiving it in a will. Now the same thing, but it's called the bequest. That's personal property. That's your cars, your airplanes, uh, you know, anything, jewelry, anything that's going to be personal property, not considered real property or immovable, but movables in Louisiana, they're called bequest, okay? And then we're gonna look at a term called forced airship. Now, Let's just kind of summation, let's just kind of summarize right here when we talk about testate. Dying with a will, remember collation, someone collected in advance, so they're not going to receive that in the will when the time comes. A device is real property that's gifted. A device or is one who gives. Device is the one who receives. Again, all real property are considered immovables. A bequest is someone uh, is a gift of personal property from a will. Okay. That's called a bequest. Now, we're gonna shift gears here a little bit and we're gonna talk about forced airship. This is a very important concept that you need to know for the state exam. And I got a diagram I'm gonna show you after we go over this. So forced airship is a civil code law that protects the children who are under 24 years of age, okay? They protect the children under 24 years of age. Now, this is the immediate marriage. Okay, so we're talking about children that are receiving from a will. Okay, not talking about intestate. That has nothing to do. Remember, intestate is a law of descent distribution. The Louisiana, the state of Louisiana will determine who gets it. We're talking about someone that leaves a will. Okay, that leaves a will. The, the, the law has in place called forced heirship for children in the immediate marriage under 24 years of age. There are certain laws that apply that they get forced. They get forced airship to them. Okay, let's take a look at this. Remember, under, under 24, or you can say 23 years of age or younger, so up to and not including 24. So under 24 years is the age category. And they're call, it's called legitime. This is the concept of forced heirship called legitime, means it's forced on the descendants of age. So up to and including 23 or under 24, it's called legitime. That is a civil code term that says we are forcing a portion of the estate on these descendants that are under 24 years of age, okay? That's called forced heirship. That is a civil code law. It protects the children. Now, here's the law. If in the immediate marriage, the couple has one child, and let's say the husband dies, okay? And the husband had a will. A third of the estate automatically goes 
to one of the forced heirs or the children under 24, one of the children. If there's only one child, okay? Now, in the will called the disposable portion, that can, is three quarters, that can be willed off to whoever, okay? But at least a third of the estate has to go if there's one child, okay? Now, if there's two or more children, then half of the estate is distributed and half of it is disposed in the will, however the individual wants to write that out, okay? Very important concept that you understand here. It's called forced heirship. These are children receiving from a will only in the state of Louisiana civil code. This is not common law. They're under the age 24. They have to be under age 24. We're talking about in an immediate marriage. So one child gets a third of the estate. There's one child, and that means three quarters can be disposed in a will. Two or more children, half of the estate goes to the um, forced heir uh, child under 24, and the disposable portion is one half in a will. Okay, you need to know these numbers. Now, in the law, also, uh, parents can disinherit children. That that can be done, okay? You don't need to know in what situation that happens, but just know if there's a question on the state exam, yes, parents can disinherit children, and this does not apply then. Don't forget the term usufruct. In one of my other sessions I've got, we got uses and fructus, the right to use and enjoy the fruits of the property. Remember, usufruct always goes to the surviving spouse. Okay, and I got a diagram I'm going to show you. Okay, forced heirship has nothing to do with usufruct. It does not interrupt the usufruct either. Okay, so usufruct kind of has priority or it trumps everything else. But you need to know forced heirship for the civil code test. Now, let's go to a diagram and let's discuss this and see if we can lay some eyes on it to get a better understanding. Remember, legend time is forced portion. Okay. We're talking about community property here in Louisiana, 50-50. So 50-50 is community property, husband, wife, okay? Husband, wife, community property, okay? We understand that concept. That's co-ownership in Louisiana between a husband and wife. They own 50-50. Now, remember the ownership 50% and use of fruct 50%. Let me talk about that for a second, okay? So here's what happens. A husband and wife get married, buy a house. They each own undivided interest of 50% each. That's in value. So, you know, the husband doesn't own the upstairs and the wife owned the downstairs. It's the unit value as a whole. They own 50, 50 each. If it's a $300,000 home, then the asset's worth $150,000 to each of them. Okay, so they own the unit as a whole, 50-50. Let's say the husband writes a will out, Okay and the husband then dies, okay? Remember, from the usufruct video I did, the wife has 50% ownership, but she has usufruct rights over the husband's 50%, which means she stays in the property to use it and enjoy the fruits of it. Nothing can disrupt that whatsoever, nothing at all, until she either gets remarried or also dies, okay? Or if she agrees to terminate the usufruct. Okay, so the usufruct always is in existence and it cannot be disrupted. Now, let's move on to the forced portion. So 50-50, uh, husband and wife, the husband dies, test date, remember what test date means, with a will. Here we go. So let's say in a first marriage, there's a son that the husband has, okay, um, has a good relationship with. And let's say the, uh, the first son is, you know, over 24, and he wrote a percentage in a will of his 50%, he wants to will to his first son, okay? Which is, you know, legal. But before that son can get what's in that will, remember the forced portion, in the current marriage, let's say they got a daughter that's 18 years old, okay? Okay, so here's the scenario, 50-50, they own community property, the husband's got a will, the husband dies, wife gets 50% ownership of the property and 50% use of fruct. That's not bothered. Okay. Now, in the will, he left a portion of his estate 
in a first marriage to a son that he has a good relationship with that say is over 24, okay? Now in the current marriage, they got a daughter that's 18 years old and there's only one daughter, okay? So that's in the current marriage. So we know that forced portion is only gonna be one quarter of the estate that the husband must force on the daughter. And what does the son get? Three quarters, okay? So whatever portion or percentage in the will that the, that the husband has left the first son, the daughter gets an immediate one quarter of the estate and then disposable portion is three quarters, okay? That has to be done. This is what the law is in civil code, okay? So to summarize, let's go back and look at this. 50-50, community property, that's where we stand, husband and wife. Husband writes a will, in the will, includes a son in the will of a first marriage, has a good relationship, a percentage of the estate he wants the son to have. Now the husband dies. First thing that happens, wife gets ownership of 50%, then gets usufruct rights of 50%. That's not interrupted. You can't terminate that. She gets uses or use to property, and she gets to enjoy the fruits of the property. So that she gets to stay in the property until she remarries, dies, or she agrees to terminate the use of fraud. So the husband dies. He's got a will to the first son for a percentage of the estate, but there's a daughter in the immediate marriage, 18 years old. Remember, under 24, one daughter automatically gets a quarter of the estate forced. The remaining portion, which is three quarters, can now be willed to the son in the first marriage. Okay, that's called forced portion or legit time. Okay. Hey, listen, I hope you enjoyed this little session here on donation, mortis cause. Listen, if you need some more help and you need to get some tutoring, go to privatetutoringsession.com, privatetutoringsession.com. Listen, good luck on your exam. Bye for now.